Welcome to another episode of Game Boy Roulette, where we take a look at randomly chosen games from the Game Boy Library. Pack Attack. Ooh, I sent some pellets in our future. So, everyone bear with me on this as I ask what'll sound like an odd question. Why did Pac-Man never reach the heights of other gaming characters? I mean, yes, Pac-Man is an icon of gaming, a star of one of the first massive arcade hits. And yet, somehow in terms of importance, Pac-Man doesn't seem to have the same staying power as other characters. I mean, when you think of video game mascots, Pac-Man doesn't really spring to the top of the list. He just doesn't have the kind of instant recognition of someone like Mario or Sonic, two characters who did a much better job at evolving over the years since their debut, albeit they did evolve in totally opposite directions. No, Pac-Man is one of those characters more destined to be a vintage icon, an important figure in the past of gaming, but sat back to let new franchises take hold as the medium grew. But it certainly wasn't for a lack of attempts over the years. Pac-Man World, Pac-Man Adventures in Time, Pac-Man Party, Pac-Land, they really tried a lot of weird stuff with the character, too mostly indifference. And one of those attempts was Pac-Attack, a 2D falling tile puzzle game released for all the consoles at the time, including the Philips CDI of all things. It certainly sounds weird for Pac-Man, but far from the oddest thing he's done. Seriously, if you've never seen Pac-Land before, it is, uh, quite the experience. The cover makes it seem like Pac-Man has taken some advice from Kirby and is trying to look as angry as possible. Look, dude, it's already bad enough that you're about to eat those ghosts. You do not have to be a jerk about it. Pac-Man never excelled in other genres, but how about a puzzle game? Load up on cherries, it's time for Pack Attack. Namco, produced by Namco. Ooh, Pack Attack! That logo looks kind of nice, but, uh... Can't say the same for this mute. What is this music? Oh, there we go. Okay, it took a bit to kick in. Now it's alright. Alright, I am curious about how this game plays. Apparently it is a tile puzzle game. Uh, let's go normal. Well, it's definitely got that, uh, Tetris style. Start, yes. Okay. Oh, what? Wait a sec. Both buttons rotate in the same direction, so... A, B. A, B. Well, shoot. Uh, put some ghosts there. Uh, does Pac-Man eat the ghosts? He does. Okay. Okay, there is dropping physics. I wonder, can Pac-Man just eat all of these? No, he can't. He can only eat downwards. Okay, so I need to keep that in mind. What, does uh, making a line count for anything? All right, let's see if I've got this right. He should go, yep. Making a line does count. It's kind of an interesting mix of Pac-Man style gameplay with tile gameplay. The, the presentation is a little, God, how do I put this? All the bricks and the piping up there, it's a little busy, you know? I kind of prefer the tile games where they focus specifically on what you see in the actual, you know, set. I would have put it right in, like, the center of the screen. Maybe gotten rid of the brickwork. Or at least just eased up. Then again, it kind of does have that sort of arcade vibe going. Oh, I just noticed there's a star on the left. Is that what I have to do to win? Do I have to fill up the star? All right, I'm actually, I'm kind of digging this. This is a very interesting style of tile gameplay. Will this work? No. Okay, only Pac-Man can get rid of the ghosts. I can't, like, make a line of ghosts. Oh no, Pac-Man's dead. Uh-oh. Okay, music kind of rules now. No, come back! Where'd, where'd the awesome music go? Was that only for if I was, like, in a dangerous place? Because I, I liked that music more than this. There we go. Yeah, this music is way better. Uh-oh. No, no, no. Ah, We didn't even get to fill the star. I got first place and I didn't fill the star. Hang on, what happens when you fill the star? Give me a sec. There was only one guide for the game and it doesn't say what happens. Okay, we're gonna have to fill up the star, but first, puzzle mode. Wow, that is impossible to read. Oh my god, what is this background? Receive a limited number of packs to gobble up all the ghosts. Changes direction, okay. Hmm. We should be able to do this, right? Okay, so this is just like a pre-made puzzle mode. That's kind of neat. 
good. <laughs> I'm good. I think we get the gist of it. I now have a mission. We must see what happens when you fill up the star in normal mode. Okay, now that I know what I'm doing, certainly this will go better. Wait, just one pack? What? Oh, is this because I'm on easy mode? Does the star only fill up on, like, normal mode? That would be weird. Yeah, hang on. No, we're going to a different mode then. Yeah, each mode changes the rules a little bit. That's cool, too. I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> I mean, obviously, as a big fan of Tetris, I was going to enjoy anything that's sort of Tetris-like. But it's done quite well. It's a very unique concept that actually blends Pac-Man-style gameplay with Tetris. All right, Pac-Man, go. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna take a while to get that star, but, like, I, we need to know, right? This is absolutely required information. In the intro, I talked about how Pac-Man didn't quite have the staying power of other characters. I mean, obviously Pac-Man is still a huge icon, but just didn't have as many, you know, relevant games as others. I wonder if they would have stuck to games more like this? If that would have been different, because this is, like, a perfect mix of unique gameplay and Pac-Man. Let's get rid of some of these. Okay, the speed is really picking up. Jump, 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 and destroy. Perfect, look at this. Yeah. And a double reward. I think that if Pac-Man had done more puzzle games like this, he'd probably be remembered closer to, you know, having the number of successes as Mario or Let's be honest, to a significantly lesser extent, Sonic. I swear, this better be worth it. If it's not worth it, I'm going to be so disappointed. Okay, this should do it. What happens when we get to the star? What is that? That's different. Oh! The star is a power-up that clears off all of the ghosts. Was it worth it, though? Yeah! It was definitely worth it. Pac-Man should have stuck with puzzles instead of whatever the hell Pac-Land was. Any game that makes it go with Tetris' gameplay style on the Game Boy is taking a big risk, as you need to find something unique to differentiate it from the myriad of similar titles out there. And that is precisely what Pac-Attack ended up doing, and what a twist it was. Finding a way to blend Tetris-style falling blocks with Pac-Man mechanics was pretty impressive, and the two styles meshed well. The added layer of strategy with creating paths for the ghosts for your pack to follow to get more points was really interesting. It's the kind of simple twist on game mechanics that adds so much to a game, and the inclusion of two modes of gameplay, standard and puzzle, gives some extra replayability to an already fun game. I suppose I do have a few nitpicks, but they're all pretty minor, and certainly none of them are deal breakers. The play space was a bit busy, with the bricks and piping, and kinda ridiculous fonts they used. The standard music was okay, but I find it odd that the warning music was so much better, to the point where I kinda wanted that to be playing at all times. And I guess they could've explained the game mechanics a bit better, like that star mechanic, or the way Pac-Man moves, although those could've been learned just from playing the game. But speaking of gameplay, what really put this game over the top is that each difficulty mode had its own modification of gameplay instead of just increasing the speed. I love when puzzle games do that. There really is not much to complain about here. This is just a fun puzzle game through and through. Don't let Pac-Man's strange history with different playstyles turn you off. This one is an absolute hit for the arcade icon. And again, far less weird than Pac-Land. God, what was that game? And that's all for another episode of Game Boy Roulette. Make sure to like the video, comment, and subscribe to follow the series as we continue to dig through the Game Boy Vault. I'm Brian J, and I'll see you next time.